Hi everyone, Jeffy here, and welcome back to Around the World in Many Days. This is part 48, and it's titled Wreck Exploration. So Gladys, our protagonist, is once again traveling somewhere in the world. We get to find out where it is. Right? Let's read what she writes us this time. Dear Puzzling, the larger grid here, and we have two grids here. If we scroll down, so that's what we are looking at. The larger grid here is a Takuzu puzzle, also known as Binero. Fill the grid with black and white circles so that every row and column contains exactly five black and four white circles. And no row or column contains three of the same symbol adjacent to each other. So that's puzzle number one. And the small middle box is a diagonal, diagonal cryptic crossword. Solve the given clues and fit the answers inside the grid. And we have some cryptic clues at the bottom. Not a large one this time. Uh, you do not need to worry about symmetry or checking rules this time. Simply find a configuration where every answer fits somewhere in the grid in the correct orientation. Clues are listed so that their answers are in alphabetical order. Across and down clues are alphabetized separately. And today, and this is now the destination then. Today I have explored World War II era shipwrecks, which despite being reminders of much death and destruction, now host a surprisingly wide variety of marine life. Can you guess where I am? Love Gladys. Okay, so let's look at um, this Binero or Takuzu thing first. Many names for the same thing. And uh, as always, there are links to open the, the editable grid here. But I am going to try to fit this on my screen so that we can actually see what's going on here. Bear with me. About so, I think. Because I need to access this, these uh, circles as well. All right, this looks like we could just see it. So this is oh, so we get to in, input one circle in every um, every cell here, and uh, so there must be five uh, five blacks and four whites in every row and every column. And you can't put three of the same ones uh, same. So you can't put three whites like this, for example. This is illegal. Uh, now, normally these are, um, this is nine by nine. Normally these are, uh, the size is paired, so it's like four and four, but uh, but it's, you can sometimes see these uh, sort of, where there are more blacks than, than whites, for example. Um, so that's the case here. So we have to, have to keep in mind that we need one, one black more than, than whites. And then uh, were there any other other rules we needed to keep? So five blacks, four whites, and no three uh, in a row. Okay, so that's that's all the rules. And we can start looking up at these givens and see what the best place to start would be. Well, there are some immediate places to start here. And um, the the easiest ones to spot are going to be the places where um, that are one away from being a, a stretch of three. So, for example, if we put just one white here, that's already broken. So we can only put a black here. And since we have to fill every cell, this has to be a black then. And the same is true of this. And now, once we fill these in, uh, we can already start uh, start to see that now this makes a, a stretch of two blacks and we can't put a black on either side of this. So we have to surround this with whites now. And here we also have two blacks uh, in, a, in this stretch of three, and we can't put a third one here in the middle. So this must be white as well. And then in the, um, in the rightmost column here, also we must put a black between these, otherwise we'll get three, three whites uh, in a row here. Uh, now, once we get some uh, um, some cells in, like for example this uh, this column, uh, what is this, column eight, is, um, is it's only missing two two cells. So we we can start to count how many um, cells we ha uh, how many whites and how many blacks we have. Now here it's not um, it doesn't help us because we have 
four blacks and three whites here. So we need one of each. So it doesn't help us here. Where it might help us is uh, uh, row two here. So here we on row two, we already have um, three whites and we need we can only add one more. And all the others are going to be black. So in particular, we can't put two blacks here in these two cells because then we would have three blacks in a row. So one of them is going to be the, the one remaining white that we have, which means that there are no whites left for these two cells. These have to be black. If we put a white here, that's all the whites in the row and these must be black and that's broken. So these are both black and now we have two blacks in a row. So that, that must be surrounded by whites. Now again, after putting these two whites in, in this column three here, we have three whites in uh, in this column. So we can only add one more. And there are places now that we can see that they can't go in. So we can't put a white here because then these all would be black, three blacks in a row. Same, same is true of this. This would force these three to be black and they would be all next to each other. So at least this and at least this is black. Now we don't know where the white goes here. It could go either way. One is white and one is black, but we don't know uh, in which orientation in which orientation they go. But we do do know something about this because now we have two blacks here next to each other, so they must be sur surrounded by whites. And here we have uh, two whites with a gap in uh, gap between them that must be black to prevent three three whites in a row. And here we have two whites, so surrounded with blacks. And here two blacks. Can't put a third one here, so that's white. And uh, this is the first example of this row being um, complete. So we have all the whites. We put in four whites, so the rest must be black. We can just fill that in now, and that should help us with the columns then. Uh, this column now needs a white in this spot, otherwise there's a problem with these three blacks. So this is a white. And uh, were there any other columns that we filled? I don't think so. What about this column here, column, um, this row here, row four? So we have three white uh, circles already, so we can only put one more. If we put a white here, that makes the, all these three black, and that's illegal. So this can't be white, that must be black. Two blacks in a row, so the third one must be white. And there we have two whites, so that must be black. And that continues, we have two blacks, so this must be white. And also here we have two blacks, and this must be white. And uh, now on this column, well, first of all, we have two whites, but even even more powerful is that we have all the white uh, circles we need uh, that we can put on, on this uh, row, is it row seven? So we have four whites already, so all of the others are in fact black. Um, now, here we have two blacks, so the third one must be white. And here we must separate these whites with, with black, so otherwise we get three in a row here. So that must be black, that must be black. And here we must separate these blacks with whites, same reason, same logic here. So this uh, left-hand side is starting to, to fill up pretty easily here. And here, in fact, when we when you have only one cell left, you always know what that's going to be. So just count. We have three whites, so we need one more. That's white. Two whites in a row. Can't put a third one, so that's black. Now, how many whites do we have here? We have four whites already, so the rest are black in this uh, column four. And um, what else? Now we have two blacks next to each other, so this must be white to prevent uh, a stretch of three here. How many whites do we have here? We have three whites, so we have we need one black, one white, but we know in which order they go because this can't be black. That would be three blacks in a row. So this is white, so this is black then on this column. Now this row is complete. We have uh, five blacks, so the rest are white. This remain one remaining cell is going to be white. And uh, do we know about this row two? We have three white cells, so that's going to be one white, one black. We don't know the order. And on row three, we have three whites, also one black, one white. And it's going to be the opposite. Uh, not necessarily. Does it have to be the opposite? Maybe it does, um, but it doesn't matter. We don't know 
Uh, either way, we don't know the order there. Uh, how about this first row? Oh, this first row we know. We have four whites on the first row, so that's the easier way to go. So fill this with blacks because we can't put any more whites in. And now there's only one missing on this uh, column. Uh, is it eight? Column eight. So we need one more white. So that's white. What about this last column? We can only put in one one more white, but I don't think we know anything about where it can go because these could both be, both be black and that would be fine, and these could both be black and that would be fine. So I think we can't yet figure out where the white goes in column nine. Oh, row, uh, row nine is already filled. We have nine, uh, nine. We have uh, four, four white cells here. So this rest must be black. Now we have, have to put a white here to separate these two. That gives us three whites in, on this row eight. One, one of these must be white, one black. We don't know which, but here we have on this, uh, what row is this? Row six. Yeah, row six is uh, already four whites, so we have we can put put these blacks in. We haven't had a situation where where we had all the blacks and had to fill in the whites yet. But but I mean the same logic applies both ways. You can count if you have all the white cells you need or all the black cells you need. Now this column should have something interesting going on because if we have four black cells, we can only put in one more. So if we put the last row in a black cell here, these three are going to be white. That's a problem. And if we put it here, these three are going to be a problem. Oh, actually, that's going to be a problem for the for the blacks anyway. So this is white anyway. And now uh, the black can't be here because we need a black to, to prevent this being a stretch of three whites. So that's black and that's five blacks. So we can fill this as white. And now these rows are done because we are missing a single single cell and a single cell is always always resolvable. So we have four whites here, we need a black here. We have three whites here, we need one more. In the column here, uh, we have we need a black here to prevent um, three vertical white, whites here. And in fact, the column has four, four white cells, so this is black as well. Now to finish off, this has, this row has four white cells, so we need a, one black. And this one has, row eight has three white cells, so we need one more. So this is going to be the the finished uh, Takuzu or Binero, whichever you want to call it. I'm sure there are other names for the same thing as well. So uh, what do we do with this is um, we're going to solve the, uh, the crossword next, and then we're going to try to fit these two things together. So let's open up the editable crossword grid. If I have it somewhere, looks like it's here. And now how do I make it? Yeah, I think I'll put it in the corner because I have to I have to also somehow fit the clues on the screen. So I'll put this in the corner and then open the Clues on the other in the other window. So here we are, and these are cryptic clues this time. Looking at the tags below, so cryptic crosswords. And we've had plenty of cryptic crosswords before. Now this is um, actually a diagram of crosswords. So we don't know yet where to put this. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to leave leave this open and open a notepad we can, where we can just list the answers. And once we have all the answers, we should be able to uh, create a grid for those answers. So here we are. We can list the answers here. And one thing to note was that these are going to be alphabetical. So the answers are going to be alphabetical uh, across this and down separately. So, okay, there's no uh, need to go in any other order than from starting from across A, because nothing is going to help us solve the other clues. So, let's see. Um, so, the first clue is God of every person and one horse. And that's a five-letter answer here. 
um, every person thinking of uh, obviously we need a five letter answer so the components are going to be very short words a short word for every person is all a l l and then we need something meaning one and something meaning horse to create five letters and that's going to be the five letter a five letter term for god uh, well if you have a l l already uh, i think it's fairly easy to see the word allah being a possibility. Now how does that work? Every person is all. That's this one here. And then that's followed by one, a, uh, just the the, uh, the indefinite article, and then horse is h. And why horse can be h is uh, both horse and h are, are in the dictionary as uh, slang terms for heroin. So that's why those can be, uh, horse can be abbreviated h. And so Allah is, and God was the, the definition here. So Allah is our first answer. And obviously uh, the next one is going to be alphabetically after, after the word Allah, but starting with an A doesn't restrict all that much. Let's look at uh, clue B here. Again, God. God, a disturbed man's broken in to give religious teachings. And you can, you can, you can look down, we have the, sort of same theme here in quite quite a few clues but so quite uh so uh, god a disturbed man broken in to give religious teachings well to give something something's giving something um that's uh, often used to to indicate that the right hand side is going to be the the definition so wordplay doing something gives an answer meaning religious teachings and we need five letters so a five-letter word, word meaning religious teachings. Now, what's going to be the wordplay then? If this is the wordplay, what are going to be the indicators uh, showing us what kind of wordplay we need? Disturbed, um, obviously can have some, some synonyms, useful synonyms as well. But disturbed, if you disturb a word, disturb the letters, you put them in a different order. So that can be an anagram indicator. And in this case, it is. So we need an... Um, an anagram of God, a. Uh, that's four letters. And then man's broken in. Well, man uh, can be abbreviated M. And if M has broken into something, it is inside the anagram of God. Uh. So we have an M inside an anagram of God uh, to make a word meaning religious teaching. So that's going to be dogma. That's our five-letter answer there, and yeah, this was this part was the the definition. Uh, now, this to give doesn't necessarily have to be here. It was the the what we call the connector, the so the, sort of showing that this uh, right-hand side is the definition. It doesn't have to be. It it could be part of the definition. It, the the definition could be to give religious teachings, to preach might might have been an answer for that one. So. Uh, but but here it was a connect. So uh, clue C here. So no, no, so now we are starting with a letter after either D or after that. Uh, um, prophet and head of monastery brew, brewed chai. Uh, head of something very common, very commonly the first letter of monastery. So head of monastery could be M. Something is brewed, uh, again, mixed, made into something else. So if you brew the word chai, you put the letters chai in a different order. Put that after the M for head of monastery, uh, then you have five letters and we need five letters. So prophet here, uh, that's the definition part. We need M for head of monastery and an anagram for chai. And you do that, you get Micah, which is the name of a prophet. Um, then clue D is, um, again, God's taking excessive quantity in. Now, something's taking, or something's taking in something, it's often, uh, well, it's 
very plain that it can be like a container indicator. A word takes another word inside it. Now here it's not. Here um, we have taking excessive it well yeah just start over it's taking excessive quantity as a unit. So we need a very short term for taking excessive quantity, and then in is, is just going to be the letters i and n. So the an abbreviation for taking an excessive quantity of something is OD. You OD on something, you overdose. So, uh, or an overdose, an OD is the, the taking of an excessive quantity of a drug, for example. So OD plus just this word in, you get Odin, which is the name of God. Then uh, we have clue E here. And this is a long, uh, a bit longer one. Lord wearing posh uniform declined starters of lettuce and ox tongue. Now, what is going on here? Some indicator words that we can use is wearing, and that's maybe harder to spot than, for example, taking in. If a word is wearing the other, another thing, it's uh, it has it on both sides. So the word lord wearing something, let's say posh uniform, you put, take the posh uniform and you put the lord inside uh, that string of letters. Now, if, if a word declines something, if, if something is declined, uh, you just it's removed from, from the word. And obviously starters can mean starting letters. So if we take all this, and that's going to be our our um, wordplay part, and uh, this may be hard hard to see that the definition can be just tongue, even though ox tongue is like a thing, but here we have to treat it as not a thing, not a unit, but tongue. Uh, the uh, the answer is going to be a tongue, and uh, in the meaning a language, the name of a language. So. Uh, starters of letters and ox are going to be the starting letters of those words, so L and O, and those are going to be declined from uh, all of this, all of uh, all of the previous wordplay, the sort of all of the components, and then you you take out the L and the O. Well, Lord has L O here, so could it be just the word Lord? Let's build that up. So Lord. And then we put something on both sides of it. And then you decline, you remove the L and the O. So it's going to be, and we need a four letter answer. So it's going to be the name of a language, one letter, RD, one letter. Can you see it? Um, well done if you did. Well, the, the posh is uh, an abbreviation and that's U. And that is a British term, I think. It's like, um, suitable for upper classes. Upper class is U, and there's also non-U for the, for the opposite. So U can mean posh in, in crossword land, at, at least in cryptic land. So U, and then uniform is the, the radio alphabet code for, for, for the letter U. So that's another U, another U, and we get Urdu, which is the national language of Pakistan. And those are all in alphabetical order, so it looks like we have our crosses done here. To note is that we have a five by five grid, and if we look at these five words, we have five letters, five letters, five letters, four and four. So it's going to fill almost the entire grid with just these crosses. To keep in mind once we start building up the, the grid. But let's uh, let's look at the downs next. Now, now these downs again start from from they don't have to be after Urdu uh, alphabetically. They can start from the start. And in fact, if it's said in the in the description that they are alphabetized separately, uh, you can pretty much guarantee that they're not going to start uh, after Urdu. It's going to be you wouldn't state it uh, like that if you didn't need to, right? So again, guard here. For how many times now? This is the fourth time. Um, 
maybe with another meaning, maybe not, let's see. God anointees not fully rising, leading to turmoil. And now we need a three-letter answer here. Leading to uh, is, um, there's two meanings for leading to. It, it can mean uh, a connector like we had to give here. This wordplay leads to an answer that means turmoil. That's one one meaning of um, of the word leading to here. Of the words leading to can, can refer to that. Leading to can also mean the leading letter to the word term, or just the, the T. It's not here. Here is just uh, do this wordplay, and that leads to an answer meaning turmoil. So we need a three letter word for turmoil. Now, what are then going to be our indicators here? Not fully. A um, couple of things that get, could be. Um, not fully could be uh, that you are writing, spelling out a word and leaving out the last letter, so you're not spelling it out fully. Or it could be that you take a part inside, inside a hidden word inside, or a hidden clue inside um, a string of letters. So here it's uh, a hidden, so and it's rising. This is a down clue. So if a word is rising, it's written backwards. So inside the words God anointees backwards, we have three letter, a three-letter word meaning turmoil, a do, a d o backwards in those uh, in those two words inside here. So that's that was a hidden hidden word clue, and uh, let's look at the next one. Prophets got one size thinner at the middle for friend of Saint Denis. Um, size is um, a size, just the word size could be uh, like clothing sizes S, XL, L, M for large, small, and so forth. But here it's a bit, here it means that, but it's a bit more tricky. It's not just that you put that letter in there. Here we have to take the size of a word and make it one size uh, one size thinner. So, for example, taking taking an M and making that S, so one size smaller, or L and making it M, or XL and making it L, so forth. So that's the wordplay, sort of unusual wordplay there, <clears throat> and that's going to be at the middle. So we need the name of a prophet, presumably different than we had in the previous one. You, we take the the middle letter, which is going to be uh, a size, and we make it smaller, one size smaller, and we get a word meaning friend of Saint Denis. Now. Saint-Denis is a place, and that is in France. So the word for a friend in that place would be ami, A-M-I. And how does the wordplay work? The wordplay is you take the word Ali, the name of a prophet, and you take this L, large, and make it one size smaller, a medium, and you get ami. So that's how that works. Then we have this clue H here. Lord is regularly taken aback in actuality. And we need a three letter abbreviated answer. Uh, regularly, only one meaning, and that is take regular letters from, from a string of, uh, string of letters. So here we have six letters. If we take either the odd numbered or the, or the even numbered letters from that, we we do get three letters, which is what we need. And those are taken aback, so they are backwards. They are not uh, in the direction you would normally go, they are taken aback. So um, so that would make a term meaning in actuality. And if we take the sort of reading backwards, if we take the even numbered letters, we get I, R, and L. And IRL is in real life, in actuality. So that's our answer for that one. And now we need two more. Lord of a thousand Chinese people. 
uh, and again load here for the third time and presumably again a different meaning here we have here we need the name of a chinese people and and that uh, that word is basically the the chinese people the most common one which is han h a n put an abbreviation for a thousand before it and we get a lord so k can mean a thousand kilo and han after it we get khan and a khan is a lord so now we only have one clue left so let's look at this one lord passed on road by oscar and john uh, so passed on can me, mean died it can also mean you some someone passes on something you they uh, refuse it they decline it so uh, something is removed from from that string of letters and road is rd uh, in like um, just an abbreviation for road so um, like in street signs you might say main road main rd so so the word lord has rd so if that passes on those letters that would leave just lo for this entire part and that is by that is next to oscar and now we had uniform for for the radio alphabet code for you for the letter u and oscar in the same system is o so we would have lo next to an o making lu and lu is a term for a toilet as is john if you're going to john you're going to the lu so loo is going to be our final answer here and these are again, yeah, in alphabetical order. K, L is after K, yeah. So um, these are our answers, and now we have to fit these into that five by five uh, grid. And presumably, there's only one way to do it. So let's now look at the grid and see how this could be done in a sort of logical way. Make this a bit bigger. Okay, so uh, these uh, down clues are, are much uh, fewer, fewer letters, so there's going to be a much more flexibility in putting these down down clues uh, down answers in. But um, the um, the very restricted part is going to be the these acrosses because we have three three answers that fully span the grid so um how do we do this now let's count some letters so if we just um i'm not gonna write down the answers i'm just gonna put x's there just to indicate what kind of structures we are going to be uh, going to have after we put in like these uh, acrosses in any order so we would have one five letter answer one five letter answer we don't know where they go they, they could go like in on any row and a third five letter answer and then we're going to have a four letter answer and a four letter answer so something like that is going to be what we see after we put in all the letters for just the acrosses so we're going to have only two uh empty empty spaces uh, and not only that, but they are going to be either in this column or in this column. So all these three um, middle columns are going to be fully um, are going to be um, fully used by these letters of the acrosses. If you see what I mean. So, for example, if we had uh, a um, a down down answer with the letter let's say q which isn't in the acrosses well that q could not go in column two column three or column four because there's no q there's no crossing q in these acrosses so the q could only go on this column and this column so that entire down clue could then only go uh in one of two places but uh, let's see if we have some letters that are not in the not in the acrosses. So A is in the acrosses. D O A M I 
I, R, L, these look all like they are there. K, you don't have a K in the, in the acrosis. So this K is going to be one of these, um, one of these uh, extra letters. Then H, A, and N, and L, O, and O are all there. So we have two extra letters in addition to these letters that we have from the acrosis. And, um, and then we have a K, and then there's another extra letter that we don't know. So we know that Khan is going to be uh, either here at the start on the first column or uh, at the final column here. We don't know where yet, but we know it can't be in the middle there. Now, since we only have um, since we only have two of these uh, empties, two of these uh, cells that do not cross uh, with the with the across answers, that means that at least two of these letters H A N are going to be shared uh, with across answers. So if Khan is here, we are going to have two of these appear as starting letters. And we can see H is not a starting letter of any any of these uh, acrosses. A, oops, just changed something here. A is a starting letter in the acrosses, but N isn't. So if we fit, and now I'm going to remove this, and let's see if, what problem we end up with if we put Khan anywhere on the first column. It can't work because uh, there's not enough room for Khan in the first column. We know K uh, isn't isn't anywhere in the in these letters. Isn't, K isn't one of these letters, so this would have to be a four-letter answer. So it's either Odin or Ud. I just put in Odin. Uh, uh, it's it's going to be wrong anyway. Just put in Odin. So now we fit in this, but it doesn't matter which one it is. Now this H, uh, this can't be part of a. Um, this can't be crossed with a, an across answer because there's no across answer starting with a H. So this would have to be Urdu then. But then what's this N going to be? It can't be another four letter answer because we don't have any more four letter answers. We have to have uh, three five letter answers in the grid there. So can't, can't work if we put it in the first column here. So um, what's an easier way to see it? So I guess we could be drawing lines as well. We could be drawing these edges and say that K can't be a crossing word, a crossing letter, H can't be a crossing letter, and N can't be a crossing letter, and and then ask where you put three of these these three grid spanning answers. We could we could put Allah there, and we could put one more there, but we couldn't put any others. So can't can't fit there is what I'm saying. Now, the only place then where it can fit, and the, and the reason, once again, like if we put it anywhere here, well, now there's no crossing, word, uh, crossing letter for that. This has to be part of uh, either a four letter or a five letter uh, across answer, and this case just not part of this collection of letters. So it's not in the, in the middle, in any of these middle columns. So the con, we have two options. Either it's here, that's one le one possibility, and the other is here. There's only two ways it can fit on this last column. When it does, no matter where it goes, two of these, H, A, and N, are going to be, at least two of them are going to be the ending letters of uh, across answers. So it's going to be the end of N, uh, the end of Odin, which is, would be this N, the end of Micah or Allah, either one which fit, would fit here, or the end of Dogma. So in fact, we have multiple options there. Now, um, how do we resolve that one? Uh, um, can we... 
Now this is going to be a five letter answer. The part of a, oh no, it doesn't. Um, I was going to say this, we can't get a, this letter from, from an, another um, uh, vertical answer. So it has to come from this horizontal answer, which is correct, but this could be a four letter answer. It doesn't have to be five letters. But, um, but we do know that this is a four letter answer here. So one of the four letter answers goes here. Now, um, how do we limit the options here then? Um, we could write in dogma and see if it works with either mica or Allah. But um, maybe that's not the way to go here. Let me just think about this because there was a way, cleaner way to do this than that what I'm, uh, what I would be doing right now. So let me just pause for a second there. We know that Khan goes here, and these all have to be. These all are going to share at least two, are going to have at least two. Um, two shared letters with uh, the the acrosses because we already had this one sort of uh, blank letter, one letter that wasn't part of the acrosses. But um, what is it that I'm missing here? Okay, so the four letter answer was here, right? And this, therefore, is either Odin or Urdu because this K can't be part of um, part of a five-letter answer. So, what is this N then? It's either the end of this Odin, making it a four-letter answer, or it's part of. It's not part of a, an across answer. It's not che a checked letter. So there's a line here, and then this is a four-letter answer. So either way, this row. And keep in mind, it doesn't have to be here. It could be here as well. But this, the row of this n, wherever it is, has to be has to have a four-letter answer on it, four-letter across answer. So two options: one is that it's Odin, and specifically this answer here. If it's shared, if this is uh, shared with a, this n is shared with an, an across answer, it has to be Odin. And if it's not shared, well, this is four letters anyway. It could be Odin or Urdu, and it doesn't matter. So we have an, um, a four-letter answer here, a four-letter answer here, because this K we saw couldn't be part of a five-letter answer. So that means this H and this A uh, both have to be part of five-letter answers. So that forces dogma now. I'm going to write this in, uh, and keep in mind these could all go one cell up. But that's all the all the freedom they have. So they couldn't go anywhere in the grid. They could go here or specifically one one cell up this entire structure. Now, what about what about this then? This H again. We have the four letter answer here, and we have the four letter answer here. So this H has to be part of a five letter answer. And it also means that we have a, a th the third five-letter answer, which also ends in H, is either here at the top, or if these are one cell up, then it could be at the bottom. Um, but that, that, does that mean that the H is going to be our final Yeah, yeah, we're going to need two H's at the um, on this uh, last column because these both are going to be part of the last column and they're not the same H because they're both across clues. So there's going to be a H here or a H at the bottom. And now, now we could just write in both both options and see which one. Uh, which one fails basically. So let's write Allah here first. And then this would be Micah. 
So does this, this now fail in some way? Uh, what letters do we need? So we need army as as a as a down answer that could go here. We need IRL. Doesn't look like it could go anywhere. No, it does not. Okay, so this is not going to be correct because we can't fit IRL anywhere. But we could also do it the other way around. And Allah here. And no IRL fits here. Um, is there any reason we can't move these up? Um, so the H would be either here or at the at the bottom. So AMI would be here. And by the way, this is A either way. We can just actually just add that because this is part of this ending anyway. Um, so this is um, How do we do this? We saw that Allah here and Micah here didn't work. If we try the other way around, so Micah here and Allah here. Now we can fit IRL here. We can fit a do here. We can fit a me. And we can fit Lou. Is there anything wrong with that? And then this R would be part of Urdu, and this O from Lu and I from Ami would be part of Odin. So that could work. Let's check the the other two options first. So to just to see that there's not not another option here. And I think that's the correct one. That looks like it works like that. So now two options. So this would, could be Micah. And this would be Allah. Now, can we fit in IRL? No, we cannot. So there's no place for IRL vertically. So that's not going to be the co configuration. And the only only other option is make these in the put these in the other order and see if we can fit in. Let's say IRL doesn't fit anywhere vertically. So. Basically, Khan doesn't go in this orientation. It goes here. And here we saw that Allah here didn't work, so Micah was the only one that where we can fill in all of the all of the um, crossing answers. So then Adu was here. Then Lou went here. That's the only place where it goes. IRL, the only place where IR, IRL goes is here. And Army, the only place where that goes is there. And now put in the four letter uh, across this. So Odin goes there. This O was the, the second letter that's not part of uh, uh, an across answer. So this O and this K. And here we need to put in Urdu, which, which fits. And that says correct. Congratulations, that is correct. So that's our, our finished grid here. Now we have to fit this uh, somehow on top of our our binero to to see what uh, what a, a final answer we we can get here. So let's try to fit both on one screen. See if we can do that. Of course we can. Why not? Here it is. That's one. And uh, what's the other one? This is the solution. Um, here we are. So let's put in. What do we use? Blue. Ah, we should mark mark the 
mark the 5 by 5 as well. So it was in the middle here. So I'm going to mark that in here first. So that's our grid in the middle. And then we can put in these, these letters. So Micah goes here. Then we have um, Urdu K. Allah goes here. Dogma. And O and Odin. And now if we read out, and like there are two options, you can read out both and see which one makes sense. But if we look at these white, white cells and see what they spell out, that's C-H-U-U-K-L-A-G-O-O-N, Chuk Lagoon. And that is what our final answer therefore is. So let's look up what that is. And here we have a picture of Chuk Lagoon, and that is in the Federated States of Micronesia. And that is where Gladys is traveling this time. Let's look at our map and see where we are. So, oh, oops, that's very far. So we were in Papua New Guinea, in Bougainville. Last time we were in Vanuatu. And now we're going up this way to Chuk Lagoon in Micronesia. So that's the answer to our 48th part of this series, 48 out of 81, hopefully, if we all live that long. So um, that is the answer this time. Now, number 49 is going to be, we're going to have another sort of a jigsaw crossword. We had a, a jigsaw crossword and a jigsaw last time, sort of se two separate puzzles. And next time it's going to be more of a, a one puzzle where you put in pieces to fill a crossword. And that's going to be called, I don't remember, so let's look it up. It's going to be called Towering Above. So that's 49. So I will see you for that one and for number 48. Thanks for watching.